Yeah, I think it's, uh, to me anyway, signs that uh, Robert has knocked him out of his stride here. Most definitely, yep. Neil Robertson will be sitting in his seat now, absolutely stunned with the way proceedings have gone this evening. And I think it would be fair to say most of the audience, certainly on this side of the auditorium anyway, John, I think they're probably in a similar state of mind. Yeah, but I'm certain, uh, as you say, he's, he's, he's such good value to watch Robert, isn't he? You know? oh, he's fantastic to watch. Such an entertaining player. And he's sitting there as if he hasn't got a care in the world. Yeah. Massive frame now, this coming up. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean... Matches have been won. Uh, was it Nigel Bond won from, was it 9-1 behind or something? Or 8-1 behind after yes. the first session? Beat Cliff Thorburn. But uh, if Robert Milkins can win this and go 7-2 in front, well, it'd be a brave man to back Neil Robertson to make a comeback in the second session tomorrow afternoon. And there you see the wall going up. Session's finished on the other side of the arena, so they've got the arenas to themselves and... Not many people leaving. Just one more frame to play. And played at a good pace as well. What a great auditorium this is, John. Look at that. Magical, isn't it? Yeah. Magical. We did a seniors event here uh, the week before the championship, and there were so many people who came to the seniors event, never been to the cruise, because well, you Thank can't you get a ticket for the championship. Session. Robert Milkins to break. Last frame of what has been an absolute sparkling display of potting and brake building, particularly from Robert Milkins. OK, we've not seen the century, but centuries don't always tell the tale. Needs a good cue ball here, and he hasn't really got it. Now, if Robert's not straight on this red, he can play a run through and go back up for blue or bolt colour, and he's just got enough angle. And this requires excellent queuing, though. And that's what it got. What a shot. Where's the cue ball going? Oh, one. Green ball. Robert Milkins, one. Yeah, terrific pot. But, uh, well, if you like it, it's too clean in the pocket. Good safety shot from Neil. Robert Milkins does spot some incredible balls, John, doesn't it? I mean, it's quite amazing, the regularity that he knocks. Them. And, you know, people watching at home thinking, well, that doesn't look too difficult. You know, they're so difficult on these cloths. You get a touch of side and you throw the ball off before it reaches the object ball. You can miss those by a mile. He's so accurate on those. Such a natural player. And it's fantastic to watch. Be disappointed there, caught that a little bit too full. Yeah, the thing I like about the well, the, the way he delivers the cue, when he hits the ball right in the middle of the pocket, it's that lovely sound of the ball hitting the back of the leather, isn't it? Neil needs to miss the green if it's going to be a good safety, and he has done, that's an excellent shot. This is a massive frame for the former world champion from Australia. Does not want to be 7-2 behind overnight. And that excellent safety shot has created an opportunity. Has got to make the most of this. All you want to do in a situation like this, pop this ball, get a nice angle on a colour to get you down to the business end. One. And that colour will either be green or brown. Black's tied up at the moment, but pink, I don't know if it's on its spot, but it's certainly available into the right corner, left middle.
Four. Mm. Not too certain about that shot. And the reason I'm not too sure, certain, I thought he could have got better position off the brown, but I think he played the green because the green was unmissable. Doesn't want to back out of playing the right shot at this vital f time in the frame. And this shot is more difficult than it looks. It's very easy to either underscrew or overscrew this shot. And he ah. played that really well. Well played. Yes, you called it absolutely right, but you'd be pleased with that outcome. Now, where's the pink going to go after it's potted? If it goes on its own spot, it'll be tied up. So he won't mind if it goes on the blue spot, as long as it's in the open. You need an high value colour in the open to score heavily. Now that tells me that it would have gone on its spot. Now as he nudged that red, so... Oh well. It goes on the black spot, so... He'll have. He'll do well to score heavy here. Blue not on its spot. Pink and black tied up. Only the bought colours to play for. Twelve. He'll do well to get 30 at this visit. Fifteen. Neil Robertson, fifteen. Well, for Neil Robertson, that really has been the story of this evening's session. He's had chances, but he just hasn't capitalised. And that's only because of the pressure that Robert Milkins has put him under. That's a bit of a loose safety shot. Be quiet with the wrappers, please. Well, it looked a loose safety shot, but that half ball kiss on the brown has made it a good one. Never been any different this game, though. When you're playing well, you always seem to get the run of the ball. When you're struggling, nothing seems to go right. Just snuck past the yellow and a snookered Robert now on all the reds. And if Robert doesn't feel that he can lay on a red, he may well be playing the two cushion escape just to clip the red which is closest to the pink spot and send the cue ball up the table. Played that perfectly. What a shot! What a shot! Well, in the two cushion escape manual, they couldn't have played it better than that. Wonderful. Safety shot there from Neil Robertson. Good solid pot. But over screwed it. I think he can pot the brown, but how he gets back down to the business end amongst the reds, I don't know. So might be better off just nestling up to the blue. Just bounce the blue off the cushion and get a snooker. As I say, I don't see how he can. Get down to the reds while he's playing it. How does he do it? Well, it probably wasn't as thin as I thought. He's made a pretty good fist of that. Five. And I'll tell you what, if the pink goes into the left corner, what a chance this is. 
six. Clearly goes, as does the black. He prefer the pink, more room to manoeuvre with the cue ball. Well, he's cleared the pink spot, which is not a bad idea. <laughs> and things just seem to be happening all the time when 12. he comes to the table. I'm thinking he can't 13. get enough on the brown to get down to the reds. And now all of a sudden I'm thinking he's going to win the frame at this visit. And to fully give Robert the credit that he deserves, he's making those things happen. Yeah, this has certainly not happened by chance. Mm, didn't play that well. He'll be on nothing, really, when the blacks goes on its spot. Just got too much screw into 20. the cue ball there. Probably more of a stun. Although, can he get past the pink to play this red to the left middle? Not Robert quite, Milkins, 20. not quite, so he set himself up for an excellent opportunity there, didn't take it. Can Neil Robertson take advantage? He needs to. Shake of the head there from Robert, he knew that was a golden opportunity. And the way Robert Milkins developed the balls previously, this is a chance that Neil Robertson wasn't expecting to get. Good pot under the circumstances. One. Oh, but that's a terrible kiss. That's very unfortunate. No, he just wants to count to ten here. Doesn't want to take anything on too risky. Well, he looks like he's taking the brown on. This is tough. Tough and pressure. Neil Robertson won. Well, I'm not going to question the choice of shot, but uh, as Peter and I have alluded to a few times this evening, just seems to be out of his comfort zone at the moment. And that miss on the brown should cost him One. this frame. Well, to be perfectly honest, John, Robert Milkins is a very intimidating player to play against because you can't leave him safe. You can't leave him so safe and also it happens very quickly. And we did discuss at the start of the match whether Seven. his style would suit Neil Robertson or whether Neil Robertson might try to slow things down. I think Neil started Eight. off with the intention of doing that. Then he thought, well, I'll after the interval, he tried to speed things up a bit. So he's never been comfortable. He's never really been in the frame of mind where I feel as though he knew what he was doing. Obviously, the black spot is hell. It would go on the pink spot. That's why he's played for this red. 15. 20 points to lead. 16. So, well, he needs to take blacks. If he takes blacks with three of these reds, he won't need the red near the side cushions. So it makes a little bit of a difference now. He should have looked at the scoreboard. 20. <coughs> if he'd have got three reds, three blacks, it'd have been 44 points in front with 43 remaining. May come back 21. to haunt him. Looking at the scoreboard now, but a shot too late for me. Twenty-eight. Robert Milkins, twenty-eight. I don't know, it was a disappointment of realising after that red and another black, he needed one more red, whatever. It's another golden opportunity to finish this session 
said to him in front that he's he's let go by. Yes, you could just sense the pressure mounting there, couldn't you, as Robert was on that break there. He knows how important this frame is. Huge difference between 6-3 and 7-2 overnight. And that's a very good safety shot from Neil Robertson. because Robert Milkins wants to leave the red on the side cushion at all costs. He now may be forced to move it. Well, if he's looking at catching this red thin, it needs to be very thin. That's far wow. too thick. Neil Robertson fall. That's a mistake. One. Needs to stop short at the port line to be on a colour. And just about on the green. Or the yellow. You would think he'd play for the red near the top cushion. And it goes. Needs a bounce off the top cushion. Three. I'll have to play up for the pink. Now, Four. what sort of an angle he got on the pink? Because being left handed, of course, that red is on the wrong side, but may have landed perfect to pot the pink and cannon the red away. Oh, unlucky. As Dennis Ten. would say, the DDK, the dreaded double kiss. No one likes to see that. Neil Robertson, 10. But at least he counted to 10 this time and didn't get exasperated and has played a very good snooker. And a snooker at this time in the frame could win it you. Yeah. Because Robert Milkins is not only going to hit this, of course, he's got to get it safe. He's got a little bit of insurance with that blue being near the side cushion. No. Foul. And a miss. Well. Neil Robertson fault. Referee wasting his breath calling a miss. There's no way a miss will be taken. I'm just wondering if Neil has got the angle just to flick the blue off the cushion here. Yeah, I don't think he has. He's just too thick a potting angle. And of course, what? as with that last red that was near the side cushion, the blue is not ideal for a left-handed player. So that's going to be the big problem. Difference now, eight. So you'll need Seven. up to and including the pink to reduce his overnight deficit to three frames. Nine. Yeah. I mean, you feel that if he had an opportunity and he got a nice angle as Robert looks on, had two great chances to take a five-frame advantage, you think he'd look for an opportunity neil that he may be able to cannon the blue bring it away from the cushion and as i say being left-handed and he's not one of those players that can switch from one hand to the other Twelve. so this could be the key shot to this frame. Oh. 
Got the cannon, played it as well as he could. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot. Blue and pink for the frame. <clears throat> 21. This is absolute top draw. Look at that cannon he played on the blue once again. Just the pink needed. Massive frame, big frame for Neil Robertson. He looked to go as though he was going to go five frames behind. Robert Milky has missed two golden opportunities, but what a clearance from Neil Robertson. Overnight, he's three frames behind, but he's still in the match. 6-3, Robert Milkins.